Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nursing Uncharted. I'm Maggie Reichard. I'm a medical ICU nurse and your host for this podcast that delves into all the different ways that we can use this license. And, you know, we talk a lot about that and uh, also kind of reminding us how rooted we are to one another, you know, in our purposes as nurses. So I hope everybody's having a good fall so far. A little bit of a uh, life update on what's going on in my life. I think when this episode airs, I will be nine months pregnant. I feel like I was just announcing that, that I was pregnant on here yesterday, but I can't believe it's already been that long. But um, yeah, we are welcoming a baby girl in mid-November. So we're getting all of our ducks in a row, we're nesting and doing all of the things. So my husband and I are over the moon excited. Um, And we don't plan on stopping our episodes other than to end season three at its normal time. So not to worry. But today, we have a really cool avenue of nursing that I know little about, so I'm very excited to get into, and that is nurse authoring, nurse writing. So have you ever felt, do you feel like you could maybe talk about nursing forever, Um, you know, a topic about nursing that you know a lot about? Have you ever thought about writing on that topic? So here to shed some light on what it takes to become a nurse author is Cheryl Mee. Executive Editorial Director for the American Nurse Journal, which is the official journal of the American Nurses Association. Cheryl has worked in health science publishing for 28 years. As Executive Editorial Director, Cheryl leads content planning and editorial development for the journal. Cheryl develops editorial plans based on trends in the nursing profession. She ensures that content is clinically accurate, timely, and relevant to the profession. Cheryl works with nurse authors, peer reviewers, and editorial staff, and helps first-time nurse authors work through the process of topic development to publication. Other past roles include journal editor-in-chief for a national nursing journal for Walters Kluwer, we all know those textbooks, and vice president of nursing and health professions journal at Elsevier. So Cheryl, thank you so much for coming on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, we met at NTI. I saw the American Nurse Journal um, exhibit, and I was like, "This is a great avenue of nursing." I've never, I've never been able to shed light on on the podcast, so I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. So, can you tell me a little bit, um, just kind of about you, you know, getting started, uh, a little bit about your career in nursing and and how you got into nursing publication? Sure. Um, uh, so, I I finished my graduate degree. I've I've worked mostly in acute care as an ICU nurse, and I was a med surge nurse manager. And uh, a colleague of mine applied for uh, a clinical editor position. And Mm. she did not have her graduate degree at the time. And she said, "Um, they're looking for someone with a graduate degree. You should check out this job. And I said, what does a clinical editor do? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I was curious and I applied for the job. And um, I was lucky enough to get a job where I worked with editors uh, who Mm. edit uh, manuscripts well, uh, English Mm. experts, writing experts, who combined my expertise in clinical acute care um, to help with uh, making sure the journal content was uh, well received. So that's kind of where I got my start. I was very lucky to fall into that role. And um, since then, I've been working in roles, and uh, my favorite thing is to help nurses get started in writing because many times they're hesitant to take that first step or they hit roadblocks in taking that first step. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like we, we don't uh, immediately assume, you know, I mean, we write notes, you know, and charting or we write, you know, or we may go on tangents about, (laughs) about what's going on, you know, and we, we can, there's so much knowledge that we have that we can talk, you know, for so long about like a specific policy or, you know, how we do things, but we don't always think that, you know, putting it down in, in paper that like our words would have merit. So. Right, right, right. And, and, and I think many times nurses, 
who are at the bedside don't think they have enough experience to write mm-hmm. or you know that writing is for that expert out there and it's not for me or I'm not you know I'm not expert enough but um, you don't have to be the most um, expert in the field to share mm-hmm. your knowledge and share your experience and share how you impacted outcomes that's what people love to hear about Nurses yeah. love to hear stories from other nurses who who did something and were successful. Yeah. And I mean, and that's how you, I mean, spreading that knowledge and that perspective and experience is how we grow as a profession. Yes. You know, things that I like about NTI and conferences and stuff is it's just like a, you know, well of of experiences like that and getting people to come together and yes. and share their knowledge. So uh-huh. this is, yeah, nurse authoring, I'm sure, is a great way to to and another avenue for that. Yes. Yeah. And and the other thing that um, many times nurses don't think about is, you know, sharing your stories maybe in a newspaper. Um, mm-hmm. When I marched on Washington many, 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 many years ago, um, <laughs> I wrote for the I wrote to the Philadelphia Inquirer, and I was really fired up, and I talked about why nurses marched on Washington, and they published it. But if you think Amazing. about the Gallup poll and we're the most trusted profession, um, you know, that might give you a little more confidence to do that. People are, you know, our communities do want to hear from us as nurses at the yeah. bedside, at the bedside. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I want to talk about the different avenues that we can do nurse writing because immediately when I think of nurse authoring, I think of, you know, abstracts that you might submit for for conferences or like writing a book you Mm -hmm. know I don't necessarily the you know writing for a newspaper doesn't the first thing that comes to mind so what are the types of nurse writing am I missing that other nurses might be you know not be thinking about well um of course there's journal writing you know um Mm -hmm. and um I think many times when nurses think about journal writing they think more of the um you know, that they've done a research project and they're publishing research maybe in a specialty journal. But there's also the generalist journals like like uh, the American Nurse Journal, where it's not the pure research, but it's more about the application of the research. Mm-hmm. Like, I looked at the research, here's what the evidence said, and we tried this project, and here's what my team did, and we improved patient outcomes. You know, those are just great stories that I think mm-hmm. inspire other nurses, even if it's not the story or the not not the exact route that they would go in mm-hmm. developing a project, it helps give them ideas and it encourages them to tackle their projects. Yeah. So, you know, journal writing, but there's so many kinds of journals. There's, there's more research focused, more conversational, like American mm-hmm. Nurse Journal. But then besides that as well is, um, you know, uh, the journal websites many times and our journal website has a blog. Um, Mm -hmm. We have some bloggers that write for us. And those pieces are nice because they can be a little bit more opinion Mm -hmm. and not go through the peer review process. So it's a it's a it's a way to, um, you know, have your voice be heard without going through all the evidence. Um, Sure. Yeah. So there's a lot of opportunities for writing. Yeah for nurses. Yeah. I think one of the things that I, and I have a couple copies of American Nurse Journal and oh, I was just <laughs> looking through them. Yeah. It's more digestible than, than, you know, some other, some research journals. I mean, I think yes. and that's probably what is an intimidating factor for nurses that, that feel like, oh, I, you know, I, it probably isn't for me is that it, it can, you know, become this like conversational kind of tone you know, a little more relaxed and people talking about their, their different experiences. Um, there was one article that I was reading about mnemonics for cranial nerves oh, and yes. it was like, you know, like that's a great, you know, it, it's, it's digestible, you know, in a way that, that we, you know, can, can communicate and understand. And I, I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. That like totally makes sense. I can, Remember this, no problem. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that is a tough topic, cranial nerves, I, I must say. <laughs> but the mnemonic can help, yeah. Yeah, sharing those tips and ideas, and um, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, 
yeah, I think sometimes too nurses feel like it has they they have to cover the topic um, comprehensively and it's and it, and it has to be from beginning to end. But you know, many times the topics are focused mm -hmm. um, on just a niche of a content area. And that's okay. They can be three and four pages in the journal. It's, you know, uh, 1,800 to 2,400 words. It's short, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's a good, yeah. and, and, and many times short is better. I think that we're taught in school that um, longer is better, <laughs> <laughs> but actually in journal writing, shorter is uh, better. You know, if you yeah. can say something in 1,800 words instead of 2,400 words, you're saving that reader. Um, that time and energy to get through that and you're saying it more directly and right. and it's going to be a more enjoyable read so so that little change though is a little bit difficult for nurses that tighter mm. um, writing and editing uh, we're not yeah. used to that sometimes yeah. that takes a little work I'm sure well I mean it's it's got it's a skill you know like we we spend so much time in like the health sciences like medical route you know learning in like the grammatical side of that, you know, it's, it's just a skill that I feel like some people right. Right. need to develop a little bit more. And, and that's where you come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I think, um, that's another roadblock or a piece mm -hmm. that kind of stops writers is, you know, thinking they can't write well. And we're used to mm -hmm. writing, um, you know, our nurses notes and our papers and things like that yeah. for school in more of an objective style, keeping mm -hmm. ourselves out of it, our passion or, you know, whereas um, it's OK to, um, you know, state how you feel about a topic or how, you know, yeah. how a change in practice really affected you, um, you know, um, I, and and we're not taught to write that way. And sometimes that's a little bit hard too. So yeah. writing more um, active voice, um, mm -hmm. talking about I, <laughs> yeah. um, we're not used to that. And, um, you know, I was, I was just chatting with one of, of my managing editor, Julie Cullen, who's a wonderful editor. And she, um, she said one tip that she had is, you know, when, you're writing and you need to include the who, who did what, when, because I think, mm. again, we use passive voice and we don't, um, it sometimes get, can get, get confusing if you use passive voice. Yeah. Well, you need to be really clear about here's the leader that helped with this and then our committee did this and then we moved on to this project and, and here's the outcome. Um, mm. You kind of, yeah, it helps to describe the characters in in that role because of course every institution is different about how they roll things out so yeah. right right and yeah. that's another tip i that is very i'm i totally agree that we have more of a passive voice in in yes. writing our notes and things that's i mean you really do everything you know is in the third person for the most right. part when you're writing notes you right. know or like and this happened this happened to you and you're Right. Continuing to monitor right. this, you know, it's not like, right. this is right. what and we're we going to do. And we do need to write that way in our, you know, documentation about right. patients, of course. But, yeah. um, but it's what like that does is shift. passive voice adds a lot more words. So mm. um, the okay. writing becomes a little more circuitous and, and not as direct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's hard to change that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. What are some, you know, for like other than just having wor your work published, what are some incentives for nurse writing or some benefits to nurse writing that um, you feel um, for people that may be interested or they're kind of going back and forth? Um, I think, well, I think there's uh, the team, you know, consider mm -hmm. maybe two or three colleagues who, who you've worked on a project with and then sharing the load and sharing that work, especially if you're first time authors, that mm -hmm. way you can brainstorm together and talk through things. Um, mm -hmm. and it can, and it can make it easier. Um, gotcha. especially your first time, um, getting a mentor, uh, can really help make the process 
a little bit easier too. Mm. Um, I think the benefit is really that you're sharing important work that you've done. Like I, I, I do encourage nurses to write about what they're passionate about. Mm-hmm. You know, why do you go to work and why do you work? So, you know, we work, we all know we work really hard. So, you know, what it is about your work that you love and, and why do you go and why do you do it? So write yeah. about something that you're passionate about. Um, and I think that in and itself, when you see that published is, is, is quite the reward. It is a lot of work. I will say that, but I think, um, you know, once you do it and you have that reward of getting that under your belt and you have that experience, the -hmm. next time is not quite as difficult. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that more that you do it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. Sure. And and read about uh, writing for publication. We have resources on our website about writing for um, writing for publication to help nurses. It's called the Writing Mind, a blog by Cynthia Saver, who was mm-hmm. my predecessor in my role. She she writes that blog. Um, but there's uh, books on uh, writing for publication in nursing, and even reading books in English and other areas about writing sometimes just helps you with that comfort level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So I do recommend that. And I wanted to say this in the beginning too, Nursing Uncharted is going to, um, there's going to be a link below in our podcast to, um, you, you'll have access to a free digital subscription of American Nurse Journal, um, a three month subscription. If you right. just put your name and your email, um, in with that link below, there'll be a form, um, so yeah, so if you want like additional examples of like what, you know, people are writing about, that would be a great opportunity and just get your yes. feet wet in, in the ANJ. Yes. And, but and I, then I, that, I that is one of the tips that I recommend is looking at once you decide on your journal is looking at three recent issues of the journal front to back. Mm-hmm. You don't have to read every article, but read articles that you're interested in that might be similar to the topic you're thinking about. But you really want to get that feel for the journal and and also look at their author guidelines. Mm-hmm. Follow the author guidelines. In many cases, uh, you know, an editor can see right away if someone did look at the author guidelines or if they didn't. So just a little <laughs> tip there <laughs> yeah. to try and follow those. And our author guidelines, by the way, have tips for writing and things like that. And so author yeah. guidelines may not just be you know, formatting and things like that. It might, they might provide tips as well. We'll be right back to our interview. Grab a cup of coffee, but don't go anywhere because we want to talk to you about our podcast partner, American Mobile. No matter your specialty, American Mobile has endless travel nursing opportunities. With the largest clinical team of all staffing agencies, American Mobile is ready to support you in achieving your career goals. To learn more about the benefits of American Mobile, like higher earning potential, premium health coverage, and 401k matching, make sure to visit AmericanMobile.com to speak with a recruiter. Again, visit AmericanMobile.com to discover your next travel nursing adventure. Now back to the show. How do you normally start or how does one get started in nurse writing? I mean, do you get hired by the journal or like if you have something to say, do you contact the journal and say, hey, I have a topic that I'm interested in writing about? That's a great question. Um, and um, I uh, get queries all the time. So if you look at our author guidelines, it gives you tips on how to focus your topic or, or what topics we're interested in. And then you can send in um, to me via email a topic query. And I many times talk to authors on the phone as well. So the topic query, after you've thought about it and you've thought about the spin for your topic and what you'd like to cover, you know, you can send an email with uh, bullets of here's what I'm thinking of covering. And the good thing about that is if I already have a manuscript in or we just published something or we're getting ready to publish something that covers that, I can um, talk with you right back to you about, well, is there a different avenue you can take or a different perspective? Mm. So the great thing about a a query is that it helps you, you know, focus your topic even more. Um, So so many journals do still have uh, the ability for 
the author to, you know, write and, and, and uh, do that query and chat with the editor. Okay. I love picking up the phone and just uh, brainstorming because many times authors say to me, well, what should I write about? But I need to know what you're excited about, what you're doing and things like that. So that conversation yeah. really does help. Do you feel like you have a like serial authors or? Um, you oh, know, we do. That... We do have some authors who are um, writing um, some some uh, pieces. For example, uh, Rhoda Radula. Um, I'm, oh, I hope I'm not mm. mispronouncing your name, Rhoda. Um, at um, she she writes on dissemination of your work, like she's wrote, write about writing. She's written about writing for publication, um, mm. developing posters, um, okay. developing uh, different kinds of communication and things like that. So she's uh, she's uh, been a big part of our dissemination series, where nurses can read more about disseminating your work. So we have a few okay. things that are uh, series. Um, we might be starting something up soon on uh, medication safety by classes of categories um, hmm. because, of course, such an important part of our practice. So, yes, there are some series, but gotcha. most are individual articles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Way, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, some topics that are popular to to write about, but what are there things that you, like, what kind of things are you you know, pretty excited to see or things that you're like, oh, we should really have this in the journal? Um, well, there are topics that um, we can't get enough of, I guess. Um, <laughs> and that would be, well, I think um, workplace practice issues around working mm -hmm. smarter, um, yeah. nursing practice, staffing, um, using resources well, you know, I, I hear that some institutions who um, may have backed away from having LPNs working in acute care mm -hmm. now are back to hiring LPNs. So, ha so how do you, um, you know, work with your LPNs now? Is it back to team nursing? So anything around mm -hmm. staffing and practice and working um, that others might be able to, um, you know, share the wealth <laughs> and yeah. maybe learn from is great. So, um, and let me see what else. Uh, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, mm. Always looking for creative ways to um, cover that topic or new ways to cover that topic. And how is your facility, you know, um, hiring more diver diverse nurses, for example, and recruiting and things like that. Um, oh, wonderful. Yeah. There yeah. was one when you were talking about the, um, you know, implementing um, different things onto the unit. My mind immediately went to like safe patient handling and like different lift yes. equipment. Yes. I was just thinking like that, you know, we have this one um, lift that is like a life changer for, I mean, there's some units that have them on the ceilings, but they, you know, wow. they really eradicated um, turning patients. I mean, you, they, you kind of, they, you have this mat underneath you, a hover mat, and it has these hooks and then you like bring the lift down and it, you hook wow, it onto that's the patient, great. and then it just lifts it up. And so then you can put your wedges underneath and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, in, in the clinical setting, we're talking all the time about, um, you know, micro fractures and like little aggressions that we put on our backs um, yes. because of patient handling and, and you know, just the uh, the opportunity to like share that lift equipment right. and right. how we it's implement so it in process. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. And, and um, that's an interesting topic because I think many times nurses assume, oh, well, everybody already knows about that. And they may not, you know, no. we may not have covered that in our journal or other journals may have, may not have covered that. Um, yeah. You know, what what is your perspective uh, in using that? What were some of the difficult aspects? What were some of the easy aspects? Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the creative ways you're using it? Things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it really, it just takes 
you seeing or seeing somebody else's experience of using it to be like, oh, I could maybe implement that in my practice. It took one other nurse to be like, I love this thing. I use it all the time. And I, we had implemented it maybe six months, a year before, and I had never looked at it. It was just a resource that we had in the hospital. And I, you know, because you're running around, you don't actually, you don't change your practice unless it's like right in front of you or you actively seeking it out. And so- um, yeah, she was like, this thing is amazing. And they were like, oh my, it is amazing. <laughs> so just, yeah, I thought about that as a great topic. Somebody write about that topic. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's a good one. But, you know, you just made me think of, you know, you talked about your colleague and, and, you know, learning about that lift. Um, I think the other tip that I like to share is that, um, getting your colleagues to look at your manuscript after you write it, Mm. um, is really helpful, but you want to tell them to, to not be nice, but it's okay to, you know, dig in and say maybe where I'm missing a piece, Mm -hmm. um, or I made a leap or, um, you know, I didn't provide enough information here, need a little Mm -hmm. more background. Um, you know, uh, that can, that can really help. So getting, Mm -hmm. um, insights from colleagues who know the topic really well, and even insights from, you know, um, more novice nurses who maybe don't know the topic and they can provide you some ideas of what should be in the manuscript that they don't understand or, you know, Mm -hmm. things like that. So that's a great way to hone your manuscript after it's written, um, to, to, um, you know, wordsmith and, and make yeah. it tighter. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. What are some other, um, you know, pieces of pearls of window wisdom as far as making a strong piece of writing? You know, if once, once everything is all done, I know we talked about passive versus active, you mm-hmm. know, voice right. in that, in that thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what are some other things that you're like, Oh, this is really Really well, well, I think the other thing um, that helps you when you're preparing is to uh, really, even if you're, you know, pretty experienced in the topic, take a deep dive into the literature, you know, maybe mm-hmm. look at the medicine, pharmacology, look at other other disciplines, um, look at the lay literature on the topic, um, really read as much as you can, and then that immersion into the topic when you go to read, I mean, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. when you go to write, it actually makes your writing process easier because you're just yeah. so immersed in the topic. So doing um, more of an extensive uh, review of the literature than you think that you mm-hmm. need <laughs> can really benefit your writing part. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the tips I recommend. Um, let's see. Some of the other tips are, you know, um, I think when you're starting to develop your topic and focus, many people stop there because that can be tricky. You have to look at what's currently in the literature, what's currently in the journal that I want to target, what's Mm -hmm. currently in the journals that are like that journal, but maybe are not in the journal I want to target. So maybe I've I've discovered a gap. Mm -hmm. Um, So sometimes developing the topic and focus, um, can be a little tricky and and harder than people think and it stops them so but you shouldn't let it stop you so you do need to do you don't automatically know the topic you do need to do a little digging and Mm -hmm. a little research into figuring out how how do i want to focus this content and develop it gotcha Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that makes sense are there any kind of um are there any other like roadblocks that i mean that we should kind of prep nurses for as far as, you know, things that they kind of stop people from submitting a manuscript um, for a publication in a journal? I think the other thing is targeting the journal, uh, getting the right journal. Um, Hmm. You you know, like you need to do an extensive review of the literature, you need to know that journal well. You know, so once you decide, make sure you do look at three recent issues. Really read um, some of the, you know, articles that are similar to your topic in depth. Um, read them read them carefully. And those author guidelines. So really getting to know the journal before you start to write 
will make your writing easier because you'll have more direction from, you know, doing that, that homework. So I think that um, roadblock of where to submit um, is mm. easily overcome as you start to dig in and do your homework on that. Sure. And, and that whole process of literature review, developing your focus, developing, uh, looking at the journal, I think takes longer than, than most people expect. Yeah. And that's where the, just the whole preliminary process becomes a roadblock. And mm. people just say, oh, I'm not going to bother. But um, if you know up front that that takes time and energy and work, I think it becomes easier and it's just really part of the process. Yeah. So, yeah, that helps you get started. And then what happens is if you've done all that homework and you, you've done the, that, um, you know, review of the journal, review of the literature, you, you have an outline, you're ready to go. Once you sit down and write, the writing part is really, really much easier. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sure. I mean, once you have this wealth of knowledge about the yeah. topic, then it's yeah. um, you can just put down everything, you know, everything yes. on paper. Finally. Yeah. Yes. How long do people how long should somebody like what's a normal um, expectation for the amount of time that it would take to write uh, a piece? So I guess it depends on how much, you know, they need to dig into the literature on their topic. Mm. In most cases, the the nurse has already done some of that with the project that they're, you know, going to write about. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, it's always good to dig a little bit deeper and make sure you're covering everything. Um, so I would say, you know, give yourself a month to look at the literature and the different journals, mm -hmm. maybe another two weeks or so to focus your topic, develop a query letter. So, so the prep could yeah. be two months. And that's where I think, again, it becomes a roadblock because people don't, don't, you know, allow time for that process piece. So two months maybe for prep mm -hmm. and then a month for writing or four to six weeks, maybe. You know, you can divide it up into chunks. Try. I do recommend not trying to write everything at once, although I have some colleagues who do that. So <laughs> <laughs> to each his own. Yeah, um, different styles. Yeah. And um, I, I do recommend starting in the middle. Like instead mm. of, you know, if you're writing about, you know, certain ventilator patients in ICU, start right at the meat of the matter. You know, the core clinical, um, you know, uh, practical key points that you want to get get across. Maybe it's for the prone positioning that you're talking about or whatever. But mm. um, start with that middle piece, then work your way out. And, and, and lastly, do your beginning paragraph and your ending paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most people try and start with the beginning paragraph and that's another roadblock. They just sort of like, I don't know what to say to start yeah. this. So it's much easier if you start in the middle. Yeah. That makes yeah. a lot of sense because that's yeah. your, you know, you don't have to think about the entire piece as a whole right. and where it's going to go. Right. You know, you can just write, get into right. the facts and what you're excited about actually. Right. You know, right. Right. About. And about your passion and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and um, just to add on to that about the um, active voice, you know, in many cases, when we talk about a project, we'll, we'll be more objective and not put ourselves um, into the story. But in the beginning and in the end, when we wrap up and we talk about the impact and the outcome, um, you know, and, and in, in the beginning when we're introducing the topic, it's okay to put yourself in there a little bit and say why it's important to you. Why am I writing it? And even in research journals, you know, that comes across a little bit in the abstract and the discussion mm -hmm. section, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, just don't forget those pieces, too, because, um, again, that helps you connect with the nurse who's reading the article. Uh, they like to yeah. hear about why you're passionate. And, it's, and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that? I mean, it seems like that would make a topic a lot easier if you had a passion you know, yes, for what that's my number about. one recommendation. Yeah, <laughs> is <laughs> yeah. to write something, uh, especially for your first. You know, if it's your first time, write about what you're passionate about because all of this process then 
this three to four months or, you know, whatever time becomes much easier because it's, you love it and you want to share mm -hmm. that story, you know, yeah. with others. Yeah. I actually did a little bit, when was it? Maybe five years ago or so. I was talking on Facebook about nurse burnout. I think I was talking about a um, situation where, or nurse abuse, that's what it was. I was talking about nurse abuse. And it was just kind of a rant, you know, it, it was more, it was this one situation that I had, that I had um, witnessed from another nurse's, um, another nurse and her patient. And, you know, it got this, it, it was a long rant <laughs> on Facebook, but it got this conversation going. Um, a bunch of other nurses commented on it and it really resonated with them. And I was like, maybe this is something that, that we should, that we should talk about, you know, and I made it into a writing piece. I, I wrote it, you know, into, uh, and I submitted it to the New York times thinking like, you know, maybe, maybe we'll talk about nurseries and they didn't pick it up, but I, but it did like, you know, ignite kind of a fire where, you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, have these conversations about, about, you know, our safety and, um, you know, just, just that passion having, having that first initial conversation, I mean, can really, can really spark something as far as writing, th writing them down and then trying to make a difference. Right, in the profession. right, right. And yes, yeah. you went for yeah. I, I guess one of the toughest papers to get into in the New York Times, but <laughs> yeah, I didn't know where else to go. I, you, I know. Know, you know, at the time, I'm like, I'm not even thinking about nurse oh. journals. Like, I should have just submitted it to a nurse no, journal. No, that's they great. Loved that's it. great that you did that, and you were passionate. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So I have to find it and maybe tweak it. I'm sure there's many. You know, that was pre-COVID, so. I'm sure there are many things to add to it now. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to back up and just go through kind of the steps in writing and the editorial process, like from ideation to publication. Um, you know, are there you know, kind of walk me through, you know, the steps from start to finish. OK, so um, there is that. Uh, planning and research piece where you're mm -hmm. trying to simultaneously pick the journal that you may want to write mm -hmm. for, um, focus your topic. And so you're, you're digging into those two pieces and they, they kind of go hand in hand. I wouldn't say one's first and mm -hmm. one second. So looking at um, your topic idea, how you want to focus it. And again, you don't have to know right away from the beginning Sometimes yeah. that focus develops as you do some of your, your homework, I'll call it. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at journals, looking at your topic, and uh, using the author guidelines. Like I said, ours have a lot of tips on writing. Using other resources on writing uh, for mm -hmm. nursing publications, too, um, can help. So yeah. that's kind of, you know, your, your homework. Mm -hmm. Then um, once you... Um, have selected your journal, you have your author guidelines, I would recommend a query if that's in the author guidelines. Mm -hmm. Again, just to get feedback from the editor um, now that you have a topic focus. And then um, the literature review, I guess, too, is, is simultaneously with that. You know, as you're looking at your focus in your topic, um, review that literature. I, I'm old school. I like to print the articles, but that way I can mm -hmm. read them and write in the margins and yeah. carry them with me and things like that. But it, it really does help you absorb that content. So mm -hmm. um, as much as you can read on the topic, um, do that. You know, maybe you there's books on the topic that you've never, um, you know, looked at before or whatever in nursing or things like that. So read as much as you can on that topic. So you're doing all that background work, then you sit down to write. Um, the steps in the writing process, we already talked about starting mm -hmm. in the middle and then yeah. working your way out. Oh, I do recommend, I missed a spot. I'm, uh, I, I do recommend an outline. Um, mm. Doesn't have to be complex. I would say even five bullets is good just to start to get yourself organized, but that's also okay. good for your query letter that you yeah. send to um, the editor. So a couple bullets and an outline. Um, then as you start to write, start in the middle with the meat, and then um, mm -hmm. you'll um, use subheads 
um, or, or uh, headings for different sections. And that really helps break up your text. You know, if you have 3000 words without a subhead, it doesn't break it up. So use mm -hmm. subheads. The other thing that you can use, um, you know, are sidebars. So, uh, you know, a chunk where you can take out a title and a list of components mm -hmm. um, that are in your article, as opposed to writing the narrative. It yeah. saves it saves space, it saves word count, and it's a nice visual yeah. for the author. And then the other thing yeah. about that is you look like you're really, um, you know, you really know what you're doing when the editor sees that you have some sidebars in your uh, manuscript. So yeah. pull those pieces out. Um, it really, it really does help um, mm -hmm. with your writing. So your manuscript, the narrative total will be smaller, but you'll have maybe two sidebars or mm -hmm. a table and one sidebar, things like that. Sure. Okay. Um, get your colleagues to uh, review it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you can also, you know, get your colleagues review, but simultaneously you can be doing your editing. You should really, once you have your manuscript together, and again, I know the, the beginning and the end pieces come um, later, but once mm -hmm. you have those written and you think you're kind of near finishing your, your first draft, you do mm -hmm. want to, um, edit that at least three times. Okay. I would say. So, and this is where it gets a little tedious and you're kind of tired of it because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been you're like, three I don't want to read this months, sentence anymore. <laughs> it's, it's hard to, you know, even read it anymore. But if you read each sentence and read it really carefully, maybe even read it out loud and then cross out words that don't need to be there, Mm -hmm. You can eliminate, say, for example, you have 300 um, sentences. If you eliminated, uh, you know, two words per sentence, that's 600 words. That's a significant to page uh, in a wow. journal. So, yeah. and again, remember, shorter is better. You know, that tighter read. If you think of what you like to read, um, yeah. it's it's good writing. It's clear, concise, yeah. to the point, and it keeps you um, intrigued. Engaged. Yeah. Because it's it's so well written and it's tight. So that again, that's different than what we were taught in school, yeah. right? Shorter is better, more concise. So getting the review by the colleagues and then reviewing it three times yourself where you can, you know, maybe each time cross out a word in the sentence mm -hmm. is really going to help your writing. Um, you'll see it'll flow better. If you're really brave, read it out loud. Mm -hmm. um, or have someone read it out loud to you <laughs> and, you're, and you can really see where you can maybe tighten it up and, and yeah. do a better job. And then, you know, I think that's it then, you know, you're uh, ready to submit again, make sure you're following the author guidelines. Cause again, the editors can see that right away. So mm. yeah. And then do they are, when you submit a query and is the response to the query, like, okay, that's, you know, an interesting topic. We'll see what you come up with. Yes. Or, okay. Yes. So we, we, uh, we respond to the query. I give them a word count to kind mm -hmm. of go by and I send the author guidelines to make sure they follow those. I may give some other suggestions as well. Um, sometimes I get queries and they're extremely broad. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I want to write about um, being a strong leader and developing better uh, retention policies. A mm -hmm. little too vague, so you need to get a little more precise. That's where, you know, those four or five bullet points really help. Yeah. Um, and again, you don't need a super detailed outline. Just, you know, right. just a couple bullet points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happens or how often do people, you know, s submit, they finalize, and then it doesn't get published? Or they say like, oh, it's not. W would they go back to the drawing board, like to edit? Would they just continue to edit it until it might be something that, you know, is is usable? Or would they be like... Yeah. You know, it's just not something that we're going to. That's a really good question. So um, we have queries what, that um, don't work for our journal because it's probably not the right journal. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But once we have um, a query that's interesting and I respond, then when they submit the manuscript, the next steps are um, we review it internally, the editors review and decide whether we're going to send it for peer review. And then we get peer okay. reviewer comments. Um, typically okay. three peer reviewers will read that and provide uh, comments. In most cases, then the next normal step um, in the process or the next regular step in the process is that um, we send the peer reviewer comments to the author to consider those comments okay. in improving their manuscript. Um, can be frustrating if you're not prepared for that as a nurse mm -hmm. author, but knowing that, um, you know, in most cases, reworks are, are normal or suggestions for rework are normal. And the good thing about it, it you know, take it as a plus because mm -hmm. I've had people um, who are peer reviewers who are looking at my manuscript and giving me suggestions for making it better. So um, again, it makes the time frame a little bit longer and it's, yeah. it's more work, but the piece will um, most likely be be better because you're getting those peer reviewer comments. So you've had your colleagues, you've done your heavy editing over and over again, again, you've done your literature review. Now you have peer reviewer comments. It's going to be great, but <laughs> it, it, it is work and time. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure it's so satisfying at the end when you finally have it published and you have your work. In it, it is, it is. And, and the other thing about that is that in many I, I hear many thank yous from published authors who've, you know, uh, redone their manuscript. They've taken into consideration um, peer reviewer comments. They've reworked their manuscript. They've sent it back in. And then our editors worked with it and we get it into layout and we have queries and questions and we still continue to refine. And then when they see the finish, they're just, we have, you know, add some uh, graphic images and they're thrilled. So. It's, yeah. It can be, yeah, it can be very rewarding. Now, do you see a lot, you know, people that, that are nurse authors primarily as a profession, or is it normally like a supplementary, um, you know, a lot of people are still working like inpatient or like a professor or um, what have you, and then they're publishing on the side? So um, most of our authors, they're nurse authors. Mm -hmm. um, they may be in uh, leadership roles, education roles, but many mm -hmm. are in staff nurse roles, uh, mm -hmm. clinical nurse specialist roles, yeah. uh, acute care, home care, primary care, nurse practitioners. We have uh, nurses in a variety of roles. Mm -hmm. We um, At times we have uh, non-nurse authors who are experts in their fields. But most of the time, our, our authors are nurses and nurses, uh, colleagues, you know, their colleagues, where they're working on the project together. Yeah. I see. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to talk specifically, I want some to take some time to talk specifically about American Nurse Journal um, and kind of just what it's, what it's about and what you guys like, you know, hearing about and, and what kind of sets you know, American Nurse Journal apart from, from other journals. So when people are interested in, in looking at subscribing to a journal, they, ha they have a little bit of information mm -hmm. on the ANJ. Well, we are, um, two key areas that we cover a lot are clinical content. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned, you know, the cranial nerves assessment, very much yeah. um, clinically focused so that um, nurses can work smarter, hopefully, um, mm -hmm. in their practices. But then also the other big area is, you know, practice focus. So um, staffing, uh, retention, um, strategies for working smarter, um, uh, improvement projects that were successful in reducing falls or, yeah. you know, um, improving patient outcomes in some way. So um, practice and clinical related is um, the main focus mm -hmm. and that application of research. So not just the research, but here's the research that we took as a group 
um, and we reviewed. So we came up with this plan and we implemented this plan and here was the outcomes and, and here's what worked and here's what didn't work. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, I, you know, I'd like to say that it's really useful, practical, something that you can take away and use at the bedside pretty re- readily. Yeah. Um, or, or something that really inspires you to, um, mm-hmm. think about your work, your practice, where you might be able to make some improvements based on what you've read in the journal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and like I said before, I think that the journal is very digestible to yeah. for the reader. I mean, and yes. you take so much time to, um, you know, coach your nurses to be concise yes. and being, yes. you know, writing well. Yes. Well, we do have a, you know, um, somewhat of a, a, a conversational writing style and um, we don't do a lot of citation within the text like you might see mm-hmm. in a research yeah, journal that. in APA and AMA format. You know, we will uh, recognize a citation when it's important, you know, mm-hmm. such as the CDC states X, you know, when we're when we're looking at statistics and things like that. But otherwise, we make uh, the, the journals a little bit more conversational than uh, more of a formal academic um, journal that would use a strict APA and AMA style. So um, we, we do think that's important for the nurse who reads it and wants to take it and apply it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's, uh, I like that you said that it's a little more digestible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's enjoyable to read. And I mean, when, you know, it, and you pick the front cover topics too very well. Cause I was like, Oh, self-care. Oh, these like, oh. you know, they're, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Well, um, I think that that was everything that I wanted to cover as far as, you know, nurse authoring, um, is there anything else that you feel like, you know, pieces of wisdom, if somebody is, you know, looking to publish a piece or looking to, you know, start as a nurse, nurse author, any, any pearls of wisdom that we should add? Um, well, check out our author guidelines. Like I said, they're easy to read. They're Mm -hmm. digestible. And I think it'll give you writing tips no matter what you want to write for. Mm-hmm. But think about some other resources, like even, you know, um, I took a writing course, you know, things yeah. like that. Just, you know, think about other resources that you might want to use just to, um, you know, spark your um, your your writing style mm-hmm. and to just learn to write better and maybe get a little bit more comfortable with writing. I think some of it's a, a comfort level and some people are just hesitant to get those words on paper. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So use resources in nursing, but also outside of uh, mm-hmm. nursing too, to get started. Yeah. And just and get I hope in you'll there. write to just... me and send me a query. That would be great. <laughs> yes. And okay. also if anybody, you know, if you're interested in looking at American Nurse Journal, if you just use the link below to um, put your name and email in, you'll get a free three-month digital subscription of the journal. Yes. All right. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much for coming on and talking about this today. It was really great to have you. Thanks for having me, Maggie. I really enjoyed it. That brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at AmericanMobile.com slash Nursing Uncharted. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the largest database of travel nursing jobs in the industry and the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Also, a special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. Until next time, take care of yourself.